Welcome to Mailbag, where I spend my money so you don't have to spend yours. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. It's Mailbag time again. There must be something interesting in here. I'm sure there is. Let's find out. If it's your first time to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you like Mailbag videos or electronic repair, stuff like that, make sure you do that. You can always unsubscribe again later if you don't like it. That's fine. But please subscribe. Okay, a couple of uh, micro SD cards. I purchased these ages ago. It, some things have been taking a long time to get here from China because of the whole, you know, thing. It's 32 gigabyte cards, micro SD HC, UHS-1, A1, class 10 as well, that sort of stuff. So I ordered these back in like, January, I think it was, maybe February. It was around that time, probably February, I think I ordered them. So, and that's six months. That's got to be like the longest one yet. <laughs> but hey, they're here. Great. Yay. Nothing too exciting about those, I won't bother going into those in too much detail. You know what they are. There'll be links down below for all these items, don't forget that. Is there anything interested in or anything, even from the suppliers, I link down below. Go and check things out, because if you use those links, I get affiliate earnings, commissions, and stuff like that. Helps the channel, because it helps them to buy things or get discounts, stuff like that. Or even more items to do reviews on. That helps a lot too. My sales performance. Um, effects on my ability to get review items and more expensive review items certainly. Okay, this didn't take too long. I think this was about two months. Not too bad currently. This is for my weather station. It's got a solar panel on it. Hmm, interesting. So this is a air quality checker. So this reports air quality back to the weather station. So it measures the ambient air and it feeds that back and the quality reading back to the weather station. So I thought this would be quite a good thing to have in my bench here actually, or at least in this room in my lab, to monitor the quality of the air in this space. Can I pull this apart any further? I think I might be able to. There we go. Honeywell. It's got a Honeywell sensor inside it. So on the top there is a solar panel to power it. Obviously it's meant for outdoor use as well, not just indoor use. It's got an antenna on the side there for the uh, receiver. It's all fine. And it's a little fan built into it. Look, there's a little fan on there to uh, blow the air through it. So it's got a heat throughput because you know, stagnant air is not going to work. It needs to have a air flowing through in order to sense it. So a 5 volt fan. And it just takes a couple of batteries. Two AA batteries. And it's also got a USB port on there too. Now it does have some things, I think it's got USB charging or something like that. I might have to read the manual, if only it came with a manual. Anyway, there'll be links for this thing down below. If you've got the same weather station as me, which is a MySol weather station, then you might be interested in this, this is a MySol brand. This has um, got a sensor ID on there, 34. And this should be a 433 megahertz unit. It does say so on the bottom, 433 MHz. So yeah, it recommends nickel motor hydride batteries. What I'm likely to do is modify this thing and actually run it off power because I'm not intend to run it in this room. So if I'm doing a lot of soldering or things like that or using a lot of flux, this will track and tell me if I've got some issues with the uh, air quality getting too too bad in here because that's not good for your health. It'd be nice to know if that's actually happening or not. Don't forget to watch till the end of the video. Watching till the end does help the channel. Give me a thumbs up helps the channel. Chatting down below in the comments helps the channel. What those things help me out? You don't have to give me any money. Just doing those things helps. Also, watching to the end will show you the playlists at the end of the video. And sometimes I even put outtakes at the end, and if you don't watch till the end, you might miss the outtakes. Just saying. So this is an IDFU Go. So this is a DFU unit for iPhone, so you're supposed to plug this into the phone and go into DFU mode quite easily, apparently. It wasn't that expensive, that's why I thought I'd get one. Because I'm fixing iPhones right now, I'm just trying a few different things. And I'll oh, get a few different tools and we'll see what, uh, what comes out of it. Into recovery mode in 2.8 seconds, apparently. Modifying the phone without switching cable, whatever that is, and on well, update support. Well, and that turn, I'm not quite sure why it's necessary. And what's on the back? It's in Chinese. Anyway, it might be useful to you. Here are links for this thing. It's Quan Lee, which do do a lot of phone stuff. I showed my tester in the last mailbag when I was testing an iPhone battery that turned up. Here we go, now we're in. These are some more little press buttons which I picked up. Hopefully, yeah, no. So these are six pin on the bike, on the back of them. This wasn't what I was looking for. I'm sure I didn't have six pins on them. Maybe I thought because they were six pin, I could maybe modify them. I was looking at these options for the Vecol Dana counter repairs. 
and now they're completely wrong. Now I see them in person. You've got a wrong plunger on them, they need to have a cross, not a square, and things like that. And they got a six pin, not a two pin. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought these. But someone might want them. They're momentary switches. Double pole, double throw. Maybe someone wants them. Check the links out down below. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. If one supports the channel, it's always appreciated. Oh, these are the ones I wanted. These look promising. Here we go. These are the ones. So, these are what I need for the record on the counter. These look so good online, I bought a whole bunch of them. Bought 200. So it's got a little cross on the end there. Two pin. Momentary, it's actually a click action. Click action button. That's quite nice. Let me grab a button cap, see if it fits. There you go. Here's a counter which I'm going to be trying to repair. Let's pull the button off. Hopefully. Maybe like that one. Let's try this one. No. This one. Let's get some tweezers. This ain't working. Button cap. There we go. So, you see it's got a cross on here. And this has a cross on it too. Does it fit? And is it the right way around? So, it'll fit that way. It goes in. It's loose. Let's turn it around that way. That way is not going to go in because it's a bit too wide. And I think they actually do need to go sideways memory. I don't remember. Can't see through there. I think that's the orientation it has to be in, so it's on the side. So that's okay. I mean, it goes in that way. This means I'm going to have to put like a little bit of maybe a little dob of adhesive or a bit of my um, glue on there or something to hold it on so it doesn't fall off. This is my, like, my um, PVC glue. If it's, if it's that way around, if it is horizontal, then I've got an issue, I'm going to have to trim them to make them fit. I mean, it, I mean, it, it almost goes in. And if I do a horizontal, I mean, it's... You can see it's a bit wider there. Right, you can see that? So I might have to trim it if it has to go horizontal, but that's not that big a deal. At least if it goes on, that'd be great. It's looking very much like it's got a great deal of potential. Yay. So a couple of packages left here. Stick around, but not finished yet. Don't forget to watch the end of the video because there may be playlists at the end which YouTube has recommended for things you might be interested in. Other things of mine, other videos I've made. Right, I know what this is. Has some SMA cables, micro USB fittings, and some more fittings in here. I think it's finally arrived. I've been waiting for this for about two months. That's right. It's a Nano VNA version 2. So you can see inside there it's got a cell inside there. Battery pack built in. It's got a few buttons on the side. Some descriptions on the back to how to use it, I suppose. Some like examples. Be hard to see. Silver and black's not easy. Here we go. That's better. S11, S21 measurements. Gives you examples how to set it up. Not one for examples, but there are examples. So there's actually lots of copies of this thing. This isn't probably manufactured by the original person. Okay, so it's unlikely to be the original one. There's been copies, lots of copies done. Unfortunately, without giving credit to the original designers. I think there's been a few designers, actually. I think one person started off and other people were assisted with it and stuff like that. Or maybe redid it, I think. Something like that. The thing is, all fairly cheap. I mean, these are like, that's 60 bucks US, I think it was for this. With all the bits. I'll be playing around with this thing. The main thing I got this for was to check some antennas I have sitting here. It's a shame it's not in a nicer case. I mean, really, it should be inside a... 3D printed case or something. I could do that. Could 3D printed case today, couldn't I? Drop it in. Would be hard. I don't know who made this one. Is it the original? Probably not. Is it a copy? Most likely. Is it as good? Don't know. But the V2, I think, is supposed to go to 3 gigahertz. Um, I don't know what this says about it. Doesn't say much, but some download links, stuff like that here, and some information about how to use the menu system. There's a lot of menus. Look at them all. There's a lot to learn. So I'll be checking this thing out and having a bit of play with it at some point. And actually, there you go. On the very top. 50 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz, 5 volt USB, 1 amp max, hardware version 2.2 .2 apparently. Simple Vita network analyzer they call it. And from what I've seen on these things, they're pretty good. There's a couple of channels. There's a guy, oh, his name's Alan. I remember that much. Hey Alan, if you're watching my video. If you're watching my video, Alan, pop a comment down below to link to your channel and I'll approve it. He does some really good videos, especially RF stuff, and he's been featuring this, doing lots of little demos of this, you know, doing certain aspects of it and analysing certain ways it works and going into it quite well has been very educational. He does lots of really great videos. He works for Tetronics actually. Go check him out. Let's see what's in this one. 
So I actually purchased this, this is from Amazon, and I purchased this with money from people using my Amazon store. So people have my store link down in the description there, you can use that to buy stuff from Amazon. I've got various items in there, bits of test gear and tools and all sorts of stuff listed on my store. And I think also if you go to Amazon through that link and go and buy something else, I think I'll also get a commission on that as well. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, so I use money from that. I, I get, they give me vouchers each month, I think, or every couple of months or whatever it is. Because I don't get, I don't make the fish, I'll actually get money. Actually, I prefer the vouchers. Because I can use the vouchers to buy things. So I'll just put the vouchers on something and I bought these. So thanks to anyone that's used my Amazon store and helped me to buy these items because that's a direct result of that. These didn't cost me any money. This is purely from the vouchers from Amazon store. So... Thank you very much. So, these are TP-Link TLWN-725N wireless modules. Now these are the gold ones, and the reason I've got these is these are supposed to be compatible with the Siglant scopes for their Wi-Fi. Specifically, the STS-1104XE, which is why I got it. Here's the Wi-Fi module, we're out of focus because I'm too close, and let's plug it in and see if it works. Haven't done this yet, this is doing this together, we'll find out what happens. Does it recognise it? Does it or doesn't it recognise it? Oh, hold on, what did I unplug from the front? I unplugged this thing from the front, is that a wireless module? I think it was, yes. Hmm. It's not recognised it, let's keep going. I'll play the menus. So I'm going to do this because it covers up my wireless network information and let's do connect. It's trying to connect. Will it work? Won't it work? Hmm, not looking promising. No, failed. Eh, eh, eh. Don't know what's causing that. It could be my network rejecting it for some reason. Or it could be some incompatibility for some reason. But yes, yeah, yeah. oh well, let's come out here. Because I had tried another wireless module which I had, which is a N module. This one I had sitting around already and that didn't work either. Plug that in. Oh, that's a fast drive, maybe it's not that one then. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's because I had this one plugged in the back. Because this has got two USB ports. And I left this one plugged in the back. It's probably just trying to use the wrong one. Alright. So yes, this one does not connect to my network. Although it does recognise it and does kind of work with it. It won't connect. So let's swap this out. Let's try this again. Right, let's plug it in. Wireless adapter detected. Great. Let's go in there and actually set it up. I can't show you the Wi-Fi thing, can I? Well, let's just put my hand over front. Wireless LAN. Set. And I'll put my finger over that so you can't see. Right. And then try connecting. Will it work? This is now using the new one, not the wrong one. Come on. Come on. Oh. So I'm obviously going to have to play around with that a little bit more and try and figure out what's going on because this should be the correct one. This is you know, known to be the compatible unit. It's the gold version, it's got the recurrent model number. It should work. As you can see, I've got it working. It's now connected to Wi-Fi. It wasn't the dongle or settings on the scope, it was settings on my network. My um, network name had an apostrophe in it. And once I took that out, it was able to connect. So if you get any issues with connections on your scope, take any special characters out, just have plain text. No spaces, no special characters, just letters only. That will likely fix the problem. Now I had this adapter here originally. This is what I did have plugged into it, which was registered on the scope. The scope saw it and I plugged it in, but this also couldn't connect. When I had this plugged in just now, it could connect as well. So this adapter here also works. I got this from AliExpress some time ago. So this is another alternative, if you see one that looks exactly like this, this may also be something you could use on your scope. Not just the TP-Link one, this one also works. There's nothing identifiable on it, I don't think. Apart from that. So, yeah. Maybe it'll help you, I don't know. But the TP-Link ones are available, and it works fine. Cool.
so it's on the network now. Now what do I do with it? I hope you found it interesting, give a thumbs up, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and that sort of stuff. I'll catch you later on, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Also, don't forget to watch till the end of the video because there's playlists of other things. Maybe, maybe. Don't forget to watch till the end of the video.